Okay, today I'm going to do some fluids and we're going to start with an introduction to hydrostatics and uh, the first thing that we're going to do is derive an expression for the variation of pressure with elevation. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Um, first thing first is I'm going to draw a differential cylinder here. Okay, and then I'm going to define a height uh, scale here. So z is equal to zero on the bottom, and then we're just going to call the height at the top um, dz. And then we're going to have the pressure acting on the cylinder on the bottom, which is going to be going up. And we're going to call that pressure p at uh, z naught. And then we're going to have the pressure acting downward on this differential cylinder. And I'm just going to call that P of Z. And then we're also going to have a uh, differential weight force. And that's going to be acting downward from the center of mass. And we're going to call that DW. And then we're going to call the cross-sectional area of our cylinder. Um, we're just going to call that A. All right, so now with the picture completed, I just want to use a Taylor series expansion to define the pressure at the top in terms of the pressure at the bottom. So let's do a Taylor series expansion on the top. Taylor series expansion. So we're going to say that P evaluated Z is equal to pressure evaluated at the bottom plus the height which we're going to call DZ times the uh, first derivative, which is going to be the change of pressure with respect to height. So that is how we can write the pressure at the top in terms of the pressure in the bottom. Uh, so what we're going to do next is use a force balance on our differential cylinder to, to derive an expression that's going to be used um, uh, basically to do manometer problems. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we're going to use Newton's second law. F is equal to mass times acceleration. So we're going to have the uh, positive axis is the pressure acting upward. So we're going to have uh, P, I'm just going to call it P naught, which is the pressure evaluated as Z naught. So P naught times our cross sectional area, that's the force acting upward, minus the pressure force acting down, which is, um, I'm just going to substitute our Taylor series expansion in right now. So that is going to be our P naught plus the DZ times the differential. And then we're going to multiply that by the cross-sectional area. And then from that, this is, uh, both terms together is the net pressure on our differential cylinder. So now we're going to subtract the weight force, which is just going to be uh, mass times the gravitational constant. So for mass, we're going to have the density of the fluid, so uh, rho, and then we're going to have the um, dz dA, just times uh, volume, sorry, not dA, just A, cross-sectional area. And that's going to be multiplied by the gravitational constant. And that is going to be equal to our mass times acceleration, but we're just going to treat this as stationary, so our acceleration will be zero. And then we're just going to do algebra. So we have this P naught A, we'll cancel with this. Um, then we have a DZ A and a DZ A here, and it's equal to zero, so we can just divide that term out. And the final expression that we're going to end up with is this right here. Uh, so the differential pressure, so the pressure as it changes uh, corresponding to height, is going to equal to the negative rho times g, which is equal to the density times the gravitational constant. So this is going to be the useful expression that we're going to use in manometer problems. But we probably won't use this form of it. We're going to separate and integrate and kind of derive a more useful form. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just a quick example. So let's pretend that we have a lake. And this is the surface of the lake. This is the pressure at the surface. 
Um, so we have a gas here, and then we have a liquid here, and we're just going to go down some height, and this will be the pressure at that height, and we'll call this uh, z equals zero here, and this will be z equal to h. Okay, and then we're going to use this expression. We're just going to separate and integrate. Um, so we have dp integrated from, uh, we'll integrate from just the pressure at the bottom to the pressure at the surface. And that's going to equal to just multiplying the dz over. I get a negative rho g integrated from 0 to h multiplied by dz. And that will give me the pressure at the surface minus the pressure under the water. It's equal to a negative rho g times uh, height. And then I'm just going to solve this for the pressure term right here. And we get pressure is equal to pressure at the surface plus a rho g h. So uh, density times gravity times the height. So this is the form of that expression that we're going to use to solve the manometer problems right there. So manometer problems are pretty easy. Uh, we'll go ahead and do one real quick and then we'll end the video. So let me just go ahead and set up the problem. Okay, so this is going to be our manometer problem. We have oil. We have oil right here. We have air. So trapped between uh, oil and water, we have air, an air bubble. And I'm just going to label this right here as our point 1, this as our point 2, and this is a point 3. And then we're going to have a hydrostatic equilibrium. So the pressure right here is going to be equal to the pressure right here. So I'm just going to draw a line. Uh, this is still water on top and below, this line that I just drew. And I'm going to call that point 4. And then this right here is going to be our point 5. Okay, uh, so now we're just going to start uh, setting up a system of equations that you can solve to determine, uh, you can either determine the density of the fluid or you can determine an unknown pressure at a given point. But it all basically just stems from setting up a system of, of equations. So let's uh, start by saying that, uh, let's just say that P2 is equal to P1 plus it's going to be the density of the oil right here. So rho naught, or rho O, times the gravitational constant times H1. Okay, and then P3 will be equal to P2 plus the density of air times the gravitational constant times H2. And then so P3, which is the pressure right at here, that's going to be equal to the pressure right here due to hydrostatic equilibrium. So, oh, sorry. One second here. Okay, so that's going to be equal to uh, P4. P3 is going to be equal to P4 due to hydrostatic equilibrium. And then we also know that P4 is going to be equal to P5 plus a uh, row of water times the gravitational constant. And then, uh, so we just want the height between this point and this point right here. So that is going to be H4, which goes from here to here, minus H3. So it's just going to be H4 minus H3 here is our height. Okay, and then if I just start uh, solving these nested equations, um, I can say that P5 is equal, or we'll say P5 plus rho W times G uh, times H4 minus H3 is equal to, so that's P4, that's going to be equal to P3, and that's going to be equal to P2, which is also equal to P1 plus rho 
of oil times GH1 and then we're going to add this term right here which is density of air times the gravitational constant times H2 okay and then say we know P1 say P1 is just uh, atmospheric pressure that's a P not a rho sorry but uh, so P1 is just atmospheric pressure and we're trying to solve for P5 say we don't know what the pressure above that is maybe it's not open to the atmosphere maybe it's closed on top here so maybe that's closed off so we just do algebra and solve it we get P5 is equal to P1 plus uh, gravitational constant times density of oil times H1 plus the density of air times H2 minus the density of water times uh, H4 minus H3 now since the density of oil and water is so much greater than the density of air we can for all practical purposes ignore or neglect this term right here so we could just cross this out well, could just cross this out and get a simplified expression but that's basically all there is to it um, let me go back a little bit here Okay, so say that we uh, knew that this P5, this pressure right here, was also open to the atmosphere. So say we're at this point, and we know that P1 is equal to P5. They're both equal to P atmospheric, so we can cancel those terms. And then say we wanted to figure out what the density of oil was. So we can pretty easily do that, just a little bit of algebra. So we know that the density of oil will equal to, uh, let's see, it's going to equal to rho w times h4 minus h3, and then we're going to divide that over, and I get over h1. So yeah, that's pretty nifty. And again, this is assuming or neglecting the density of air which is not a bad assumption. And that's pretty much it for manometer problems. They get a little bit more complicated, but the principle is always the same, and they're overall a pretty easy type of problem.